We've got a whole slew of new milestone cards, some massive custom build HUD Elite items, as well as some huge fantasy hockey card updates as well. Let's go take a look at the content. First, let's take a look at the new 97 JT Miller. He is two away from being our second 99 of the year. He's got sniper power and two-way forward, as well as playmaking, accelerator, shooting, and checking boost in that middle slot, rounding out speed boost, agile dangler, and defensive boost to the third slot. So even though he does come with 93 speed and excel, which is very low for a 97 overall player, he can get up to 95 with those two activated. He gets almost max agility at 97. His balance is 99, but the biggest issue that we've seen is the endurance. The endurance is not going up from the launch of the game on these cards because that was how it was intended. They made it so with the new full pressure system that endurance would remain the same so that that feature in the game would not be impacted based on 99 overall cards, which makes sense. However, what we've seen is that MSP cards and other custom build items, their endurance gets all the way up to 90 and above, and that's before synergy, which really hammers the usefulness of fantasy cards more than any other card type, simply because of the cost involved in the risk in fantasy cards. So while his card at 97 overall and at 99 is going to be fantastic, it again just goes to show that with the change in how they are doing progression, where if a card like the fantasy items go off, if they get a live moment or another card earned by in-game season play, it'll just match that or go plus one. Again, it's just another instance where it's not nearly worth the investment for fantasy items next year if it remains the same. This is still one of the best cards in the game, but the endurance thing is just a major red flag on these cards. Next, we've got the 95 Nick Suzuki, who is approaching 99. And this is a very good card, even for his size at 5'11", 205. It's got sniper, two-way, and playmaking four which with two-way forward activated would almost max out his face-off rating. And you can go defensive boost as well if you want to go that route. It's got Goldborn Leader, Unstoppable Force, and Silver Quick Draw, all the things that make up a great card. And he's got 87 overall endurance, so not as bad as the 97 JT Miller. So he is approaching being one of the better cards in the game. The issue is, I'd argue that his X Factor is just a better card. And again, kind of an issue when you give out fantasy cards that have X Factors as well. So if you have Nick Suzuki's X factor or you really wanted the best nick suzuki i would go grab his x factor he's got speed boost which almost maxes out his speed at 98 and his second tier also gives him accelerator boost which almost maxes out his skating his endurance as well at already at 87 and his face off rating can get to 99 he's got gold quick draw which i love on my centerman silver elite edges which is one of the best abilities in the game and you could go unstoppable force if you really wanted to help out his smaller size so if you are still chasing an x factor this would be one much like drew doughty caden price from the Colonna Rockets has really popped off lately. And again, at 96 overall, he only needs two more goals to max out. But as you can see, again, while he's got great skating, 78 endurance. Like that's one back check or one rush up the ice and he is done. Unless they fix the draining of the energy that they got from hustling since the last patch or just bump up the fantasy card's endurance, it just really hammers their value. On to the new Hut Elite items. We've got the 91 Alex Tangay with Sniper and Playmaking Forward. We've also got Shooting and Agile Dangler boost he's got gold tape to tape silver make it snappy elite edges and puck on a string 94 speed and excel 93 agility and a very good wrist shot as well is a pure left-handed winger there's just so many good left-handed wingers so unless you're a fan of tangay this would be a sell next we've got the right-handed defenseman the 91 mike green at 6 1 2 10 with two-way and offensive defenseman as well as agile and accelerator boost that would bump up his acceleration up to 95 he's got 92 agility 92 endurance and 93 speed a maxed out shot, good hand stats, and okay body checking at 87. He's also got 90 defensive awareness to stick checking, but Silver Quick Pick has proven to be a very, very good ability. So if you were looking for anyone that can maybe go on your second or third pair on a very good team, like if you had, let's say, Kale McCarr's Team of the Year X Factor or Sammy Sallow and you need someone to go in behind, Mike Green would be a great option. Evgeny Nabokov, one of my favorite all-time players as a Sharks fan, gets a 91 overall. Love when he gets cards. Issue is, is I can't use him online. At six foot, even with the changes to trying to make smaller goaltenders a little bit better, it just does not work when everyone has 99 shooting. He's got the best ability and light work as well as showstopper, which is a great combo and 99 speed. It just still can't really do much on those low far side shots or sniping upstairs when you've got six foot five goaltenders that don't move as fast, but they just hit them. Uh, it's still an issue that EA has got to fix. And lastly, we've got the 91 Matt Sundin, six foot five, 231. If you can't get Jason Arnett, this is a great all 
alternative. Power and sniper forward, as well as defensive and shooting boost. He's just honestly very close to Jason Arnott's card. He's got Goldborn leader, off the rush, close quarters, and big rig. The only thing here is that his abilities are pretty brutal, except for obviously Born leader, which will activate on hits as well. 95 face-offs, just a perfect high division one and two online team build. The Stadium Series cards also got upgrades. The 94 Jack Hughes, which I did get to see live in New Jersey. Obviously, Jack Hughes cards are fantastic. In all honesty, though, I'd rather have his X Factor and just sell these cards. Um, I, it doesn't offer any difference of abilities or anything like that. As for Jesper Bratt, and while Jacob Truba is extremely good in terms of his size and build, the skating is just really brutal. So I would probably either trade them in if you held on to them or just sell for coin. And then we got a whole slew of milestone cards. First with the 94 Kale McCarr. And Loki, this might be the best Kale McCarr in the game, including his team of the Gold shutdown, two-way and offensive defenseman, as well as agile accelerator and shooting boost. So you can max out his acceleration. He's at 98. You really don't need to do that. He's also got elite edges and 86 body checking as well. Maxed out defensive awareness and stick checking, basically. Again, I think shutdown really makes Kale McCarr's card very, very good because it allows him to knock pretty much everyone off the puck when defending the rush. And that's perfect for a card that has 99 skating, essentially. Next, we've got the 93 Leon Dreisaitl. And man, Dreisaitl cards just continue to be pretty lackluster. Playmaking and sniper forward, as well as defensive checking and shooting boost. His speed is 91. Acceleration is 90. Again, that's not really great considering he's not like 6'6 or something. He's got 89 face-offs, so there's going to be much better centerman for the price you're going to pay for a 93. And his endurance is 83, which is even worse. So while his shot's great, his hand stats are awesome. If I were to hazard a guess, he is going to be among the master set players that we get in week two for the HUD Elites event, as the HUD Elites event appears to be like the mid-season, just great players that haven't received a crazy custom build, and it's not just prime times upgrading them every week. Nylander gets a card as well, and Nylander cards have been good all year. This one's got sniper and playmaking forward, so his shot would almost be maxed out. It also gets accelerator and speed boost, giving him 96 speed. Again, that endurance is 82. I don't want to harp on this constantly, but you have to equate that into your consideration of getting these cards. If you are someone that does not play in the offensive zone for a vast amount of time, so if you are not out TOAing your opponent by like 10 minutes, so you're not one of the better players in high division one, and you are going end to end, 82 endurance is going to wipe out your player's ability to hold onto the puck, make moves, all of that after essentially one rush. It's got max hand stats, just a very good all around card and gold elite edges. It's just, again, that endurance is brutal. Victor Hedman gets a 92 and it's extremely good. For anyone that has the 89 Nations of Hockey event card, I still wouldn't feel the need to have to upgrade. This card is better with gold shutdown, 92 acceleration and 90 speed, but it's very similar to that master set card. Max defensive awareness to stick checking and silver edges. So he is an upgrade over that card, but not enough if you were in need of or thinking about replacing. Also have another 92 Thatcher Demko. He is a star of the month card I've been using with essentially the same abilities. Very, very good card. And I would recommend Thatcher Demko. Lastly, on the ones I'm going to touch on, 90 Patrick Kane. Again, 91 speed and acceleration. We're past the point where his skating is high enough to make up for his kind of slender frame in Hockey Ultimate Team. He's got some really fun abilities, but 80 endurance and 91 speed at 5'10", 177. This is purely if you are making a Wings or a Blackhawks theme team. Do want to touch on some other live moment cards. We've got the 91 Carter Verhage. Does come with speed boost, so it does help out his abysmal skating normally. 92 speed, 91 excel. Brutal endurance. Does have gold unstoppable force and edges, which is kind of fun as well, and he's got good size. Another popular one, the 91 Connor Bedard also has speed boost. A 92 speed, that seems low. Does have 85 endurance and some good abilities as well if you were looking for an updated Connor Bedard. That is going to do it for today's content. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below, and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.